Peace Welcome to on. another Straight Talking Property cod- Podcast. Podcast? I've been fishing. Or I'm thinking I'm dreaming of going fishing in this bloody lockdown, maybe. That's what it is. So today, we've got a special guest. We've got Paul Champlina. We've also got the regulars, Emmanuel Ezekiel, who was topless, but now he's he has a shirt on. And we've got Jimmy London in one of his hotels at the moment, doing a little bit of work. And today we wanted to chat all about landlords, evictions, and this type of thing. So, Paul, I'd like you to give a quick introduction of yourself, what it is you do, what companies you belong to, or or what com- companies you operate, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Yep. Welcome, thank you. Paul. Uh, thanks. Actually, you're you welcome. You uh, you pleasure to be here. People, you? Pardon. Paul. Well, no, I, I'm actually, I'm actually, it, it would be nice if you could let him talk and then I would. I was going to say, <laughs> the emphasis is quick because Paul, whatever Paul does, it's never quick. So It will be quick. I'm a pro Emmanuel, even though you've got your shirt on. <laughs> right, now that Emmanuel's trying to take your, your, your glory away, mate, over to you again, Paul. No, no, no problem. So, yeah, so I'm Paul Champlina. I've been helping landlords. For 30 years, uh, I started off in uh, the legal profession, worked in uh, the the recessions of uh, 88, uh, 90 and uh, really collected debt and doing litigation. And then I became a private investigator and a bailiff uh, doing frontline stuff Uh, as a private investigator. I'd be tracking people down, doing surveillances, collecting council tax, tracking people down, doing surveillances on properties that are being used as brothels and cannabis factories and subletting and then in uh, 99 2000 i set up uh, my my previous uh, partner landlord action because we were fed up with lawyers charging too much money so we were the first company to offer fixed fees for eviction while working with solicitors Uh, in 2012 we became a uh, regulated firm of solicitors and since I've been trading with Land on Action, we've done the best part of 40 to 45,000 cases up and down the country in England and Wales. And uh, obviously, I, I moved into media, so I do a lot of uh, radio and TV and company do the TV program on Channel 5, Nightmare Tenant Slum Landlords, which Jimmy's going to be a guest on the next series. So uh, yeah. he's, that, that's going to be his claim to fame. They're, they're looking at new people for Love Island, so he's still got a bit of a chance for those good looks. <laughs> I ain't got a body for that, mate. <laughs> You got a body from Bay. Was it a body from yeah. Baywatch and a face from Crime Watch? Oh uh, well, I wish I had a body from Baywatch. More like the other way round. <laughs> At least we know uh, how to manual now. Yeah. <laughs> Well, like Matt, Emmanuel, I've known for a long time actually, because we used to have the same office in the same building, didn't we, Emmanuel? Manny. He's lost for words, mate, because I think oh, he's it's probably words. where you you might have been evicting him or something for those yeah, most, most probably. I've, those I've dodgy shops that you said. I've, I've, I've certainly we've certainly kicked each other on the football field a few times as well. But three years ago, uh, I sold Landlord Action to a company called Hamilton Fraser, and I'm brand ambassador of Hamilton Fraser. And we own some really well known brands in the private rental sector. So we own my deposits, the government backed uh, deposit scheme. We own property redress scheme, which is a redress scheme that letting agents have to belong to. We've got 13,000 letting agents. We own client money protect, which is again a government backed scheme where letting agents have to have client money protection in place. And we own uh, we do, our core business is landlord insurance, and we own a very well known website which we bought two years ago called Landlord Zone, which uh, we get a quarter of a million views a month from that, which is a news breaking. Uh, website for landlords, residential and commercial landlords with all the latest news. So that's my uh, that's my biog, short biog. Small, small credibility there. Thanks for that, Paul. That's great. So, Emmanuel, I know you're, you're just chomping at the bit here to chip in. So if you'd like to give your two cents worth, that'd be great. Thanks, mate. Two cents worth in relation to Paul, that is. In relation to so, Paul and where you've met and how you've used his services. So, so, so Paul and I have known each other for, for quite some time. Uh, first playing on the football pitch against each other. Uh, he's a very formidable opponent. Um, really, how he does everything is how he does anything. So when it comes to the football pitch, he's aggressive, he's committed, he's fully focused. And everything that he does is on a similar basis. So his work follows the same. So... First met Paul uh, and his business partner. So I used to play football against uh, his original business partner, a guy called Johnny Chipek, 
Um, so I knew them both really well. They played for different teams. So I got to know them really well on the football pitch. Uh, and then as I was growing as my own business, we actually rented the um, office next door to them. So we were in the same offices in Mill Hill uh, for quite some time. And obviously knowing what he does uh, working next door to me with my own property portfolio, he's acted on a number of our different um, evictions and helping us get uh, our properties back over a number of years. So I've known Paul quite a lot, quite a few times. He's also quite a good uh, boxer. Uh, he trains quite well. He's done quite a few uh, white collar fights. So yeah, over the years, got to know Paul quite well. In fact, I got to know him better off the pitch than on the pitch because on the pitch he's a completely different person. So yeah, got to Manny, know. Him you're, you're, Manny, you're no angel. <laughs> True, I'm no <laughs> angel. You're right. <laughs> so Jimmy, you've got some examples where you've used services uh, that are provided by Paul and one of his companies or two of his companies. Can you just give us a rundown on why you chose Paul, what the current situation was for you with your tenants and yeah. uh, what the outcome was? If yes, you guys I, could just chat through that. So I, I, I obviously know Paul from off the telly and, and seeing him uh, on his uh, on his program. Um, so when I met Paul, we was having a discussion. He knows people I know, which is a small world. There's always, you, you know, someone through someone. Uh, we chose Landlord Action purely for the fact of their track record of what they do um, and the results that they get. There's lots of different um, people out there, like the same as us with, with, with the training side of things. There's lots of different, you know, different people doing the same sort of thing. But are they getting the results that you know that, that 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 they require? Now, looking at Paul's background, he knows the ins and outs of uh, you know what what uh, landlords are liable for, any sort of loopholes um, that we can uh, you know sort of move forward if it, if it does get a little bit sticky. Uh, and that that's what you need. You need somebody that's been in the business a long time and that knows it inside out. Um, the one that we uh, done Paul was quite a simple eviction. It was my first eviction. Um, which I've done pretty good considering the amount of tenants I've no, got. I was going to say that for only having one with the amount of properties and uh, yeah. HMOs you've got is a good record, Jimmy. Yeah, so, uh, and I think that, again, went down to me doing the viewings at the start and making sure that if someone, I'm quite a very good judge of character, I can suss someone out normally within sort of 10, 10 minutes, you know, five, 10 minutes. So that's about how long a viewing takes. I know if someone's sort of pulling the wall over your eyes or trying a fast one. Um, so, that's I, I do actually pat myself on the back on that because I did put the time in at the start when I was filling my properties. Now I do have a viewing scale. Um, she's not as strict as me, but she's again touch wood at the moment. We've we've not had one um, you know uh, late payer or, or uh, tenant issue come up so to speak. So so yeah, so that's that's uh, you know why, why I chose Paul of uh, Landlord Action. And for anybody out there listening to this that are unstuck uh, you know coming unstuck with tenant issues i do recommend looking them up definitely um and you know obviously the prs scheme that well i'd like to think most people are members of um you know is behind that is behind my deposit which which we all use so so yeah um it's nice to you know sort of if you didn't know paul and what he done he's the man behind those businesses so yeah look have a, have a good look into it so tell me about the one where uh what was the reason behind the eviction? How come you needed to get rid of somebody? So this, or, this should I was say, evict somebody. Yes, yeah, so the so process was it Section Eight? Was it Section Twenty One? Or yeah, so it was a Section Eight late rent um, that that we, you know, and to be honest, it, first of all, he lied on his um, application, so it was just meant to be for one person. Then he moved mm. his uh, one week old baby into the property with his girlfriend. So I've now got a and room. It was only a small room, room, wasn't it? It was. It wasn't a massive, massive room, you know. Um, so it was, you know, imagine moving, you, you're in a professional house share. Yes, it wasn't one of my sparkliest uh, house shares, but imagine all these, you know, nurses and doctors that, because this one was right by the Queen Elizabeth Hospital. Imagine these people that are working shift work and then come over and then they've got a screaming baby keeping you up all night. One, it's unfair on them. So potentially I could have lost every tenant in the house. Um, but, you know, they did see it from their side of things. And I tried to help him out. I said, look, stay here for a couple of months. Let's try and work with you. Let's see, you know, if you need council housing or whatever it is, I'm here to work with you. I'm not, um, you know, being mean and kicking you out straight away because I could relate to it because my daughter was born 
the same week as his. So, you know, I've, I do have a heart. I'm not just going to kick people out straight away. Um, but in the end, he started to take the mick a little bit. And then one month went into another month. And before we know it, then I had to, um, you know, get a court, court um, appearance in, put in place. And then that's when Paul come in and then we done the eviction. Good thing was they didn't leave the room in a bad state. The room was kept quite tidy. They obviously used a hoover, which I can imagine some tenants that, that check out don't even tidy up, let alone use a hoover. I mean, Paul, I'm sure you've seen some absolute stakes yeah, what people have I left mean, in. Um, I've I mean, seen it on yeah, the programme. I mean, I know, yeah. I mean, look, you're, we're the, the the series that you've uh, that you're going to appear in was going to be series six. So I've been doing this program for five years. But bear in mind, my first program I did was in two thousand and one. Uh, but this series is the biggest because obviously, you know, we get a million every episode, and it's it, it's repeat. I mean, it was on today. It's on every day. Uh, I mean, the the worst thing is when you go into a property, uh, you know, and when they owe you money, the last thing they want to do is see the landlord because they're embarrassed. But obviously, because you're going to question where's my money. You've got to realise the deposit now, and obviously running my deposits. I mean, we, we act for 160,000 landlords for my deposits and 3,500 agents and protect 1.1 billion pounds worth of deposits. It's only five weeks, so that's not going to go far, you know, with regard to obviously damage at the property. Yeah. Uh, but the worst thing is, is yes, I mean, you know, there's a couple in this series, but the worst thing is, is when you go into properties, the smell. Yeah. It's horrendous. I mean, yeah. I've heaved it. Yeah. Uh. Yeah, I mean, what I get a lot with my tenants sometimes when, um, and I make sure that if I do a property inspection, I film everything I do when I walk in. So if the kitchen, mm -hmm. he's got biscuits on the floor or food left on the side, and a week later they say, Jimmy, we need pest control out. I put that video <laughs> up as soon as I leave the property. And this is a, a good little tip, this. If you go there, put that video up straight away and say, guys, if this causes mice and cockroaches, you're going to be liable for this because I'm sending you this now. And I've done that, you know, whenever I do a property inspection, I'm, I'm actually doing two two this afternoon, um, one to pick a bit of post up and, um, yeah, you know, go there. And I will do that again today and I'll, I, will, I will send it to Ashley, my viewings go and say, look, put this on the group and explain that if, you know, vermin does appear, I'm not paying for it because I don't feel why I should pay for it if they're, you know, they've got their house rules and that they know how to live in a shared house guide. So I can imagine the smell of some of the houses, like you say, that you go in that, you know, they probably don't have decent landlords and that's what the program's about, really, you know. But, you know, some of the landlords just don't care. The last thing that they're going to do is send pest control out. Right? They probably won't even unblock the drains. <laughs> yeah, and Paul, Ash here again. Um... What's the most common reason for tenant, tenant evictions at the moment? What have they been and what are there any changes? I mean, my guess it would be rent arrears, but you'd know better than me. Yeah, yeah. So uh, it's rent arrears, obviously. Look, we're in the midst of now lockdown eight, eight, week eight stroke nine. I've lost count. I don't even know where we are now. Mm. The days are blur. But it's, nine, you know, we yeah, are now, nine. we're ninth week. We're in, you know, COVID-19. Uh, you know, you've got to realise that, uh, you know, staff are being furloughed. Uh, there's been 1.8 million people applying for universal credit. Um, you know, mm. it's when the free money stops from the government is when it really is going to hit the fan the last quarter, the first quarter of next year. Uh, yeah, most of the time when we go into court, it's rent arrears. Uh, I do, I'm on lots of government consultations. Me and my uh, other stakeholders and directors in Hamilton Fraser, we're advising the government. What is coming in very shortly is pre-action protocol. So you as a landlord will have to have some engagement. We'll have to try and do a, a pre-payment plan. Uh, so we're actually advising the government about that. That's coming in. Uh, I was on the consultation with regard to the banning of Section 21, which felt like a lifetime ago. That's going to be back on the mm. table. That will be sped up, and that's going to that's going to come in, I think, quicker. Bearing in mind, we had over 20,000 consultations that came in on that. And then, of course, uh, housing courts. Um, you know, I was on that consultation. You've got to realise the back end of this year, uh, we are going to be uh, – I mean, just so you know, news off the press, and we broke the story last week – I think we've had over 9,000 reads on it uh, already, actually. We posted it last Thursday. Uh, the courts are looking to reopen on, on the 29th of June, which is good news for landlords, especially okay. the landlords that currently have cases in court. So at Landlord Action, we've got five to 600 cases at the moment stuck in court. Uh, I had one landlord who was going to be on the TV programme, a bit like Jimmy, 
Uh, three days before her eviction, she was owed £21,000 in rent arrears. God knows how she got up to that figure, but that's an, another story, and that's <laughs> a big problem of the amateur do-it-yourself landlords that try and do it themselves, don't use letting agents, don't reference, don't get landlord insurance, all that type of stuff, and, and wait too long. And then her case got stuck. Her eviction date got cancelled, got pulled back, and now she's been in for another three months. So what's going to happen is the courts are looking to reopen the 29th of June. They're consulting with practitioners, law firms, regulate law firms like us, landlord action. What's going to happen is hearings are now going to have to be done remotely, okay, a lot more remotely with social distancing. Uh, before this pandemic, we had a, uh, a backlog and a worry that there was not going to be enough investment in the court system with regard to more judges, more bailiffs, more resource. I mean, last year we had 130,000 possession claims that were issued. Uh, my worry is if, uh, I mean, I think the game has changed now because it's going to, it's going to be remote hearings that are going to be done. But I, before this, uh, this crisis, I spoke to a judge in, uh, when I went up to Leeds to do this consultation for the government, and she said that the that, that, uh, that, uh, solicitors and barristers weren't interested in being judges. They couldn't recruit. So that's an issue as well. Uh, but obviously, you can imagine the back end of this year, uh, when the courts start reopening and stuff, we're still issuing claims. It's going to be crazy to try and get mm. those cases sorted and then bailiffs to be able to enforce it. Uh, but, you know, we've got our, our messaging and we set up a, a mediation business. I set up a mediation business three weeks ago with our, our brand, the Property Redress Scheme, where we do uh, adjudications for uh, consumers, landlords and tenants against agents because of poor service or overcharging, whatever. We set up a mediation business to be able to try and mediate for landlords and um uh, let, and tenants to see if we can try and mediate and get vacant possession mm. earlier because the court system is so backlogged. But one issue that we, you need to touch on as well, and you all have a lot of your listeners have, and some of you might use it, is uh, if you take out rental guarantee insurance with providers, a lot of those providers aren't paying out because of COVID-19. Uh, and because of their terms of business do not allow for this pandemic. And there's a lot of landlords that aren't going to be getting their rent to cover their mortgage, thinking they had a policy in place. They might pay for the legals, but we're doing a lot of mediation for one big insurance company can at the moment. I, can I interject on that? So the, the insurance companies are trying to use a legal uh, or wording loophole, which is completely um, not legal. So what they're saying is the, legal, the insurance is based on being able to evict and get possession. Well, the truth is they can still evict and they still can get possession, it's just moved forward by one month. So they're using a phrase that most landlords don't know how to challenge, but that's how you challenge it, is that they can still get eviction and they're still liable for it, but it's just moved by one further month. So the government didn't say they couldn't commence eviction, they said it had to be three months rather than two months. That's the main difference. So insurance companies but are I think also they're using. I think also using money. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the thing is, there's one the delay in the court system. So bearing in mind, serving a Section 8 notice was 14 days. It's now three months. Section yeah. 21 was two months. It's now three months. That's until the end of yeah. September from the 26th of March. And then, of course, it's uh, there's going to be delays in getting gaining possession. And, of course, when you have a rent guarantee policy, it's paying every month until vacant possession to pay the legals. Now, we do work for an insurance company their underwriting claims team, they're still paying us to do the legals. First, we're doing mediation to try and see if... Because the problem you've got, Manny, is a lot of the uh, tenants won't be able to go anywhere because they're cert they've are they been furloughed or they're on universal credit, so they're not going to be able to move, so they're going to be stuck in a lot of properties. You know, a, a big worry in this whole crisis is not just eviction, but it's properties lying empty and voids, which is another issue. But, yeah, I mean, direct line, they pulled out the market, caused a massive big, big problem. Mm. So it's going to be a big knock on effect from all of this. Like you're saying, in the end of this last quarter of this year and early first quarter of next year. However, you mentioned something about the prepayment set up for landlords. Can you just run over that again, please, Paul? Yeah, cool. So we, we've got a mediation service at the PRS where we have trained mediators that will mediate between landlord and tenant. A lot of tenants, unfortunately, they bury their head in the sand and they won't mediate, mm. you know, and normally, you know, relations have been quite brittle. And then, of course, it goes to legal because you're in for three months for serving a notice. Then you're in for another six up to six months for eviction. You know, landlord may not get possession for nine months. 
you know, bearing in mind the rent arrears they're owed beforehand. So the mediation service, we, we do three steps and fixed fees. I think all in all, it costs about five, six hundred pound, depending on the step. And we do a pr- we write up a, an agreement. And on that agreement, it can be used as a legal document. But if, if you do an agreement with a tenant and the tenant says, I'm not leaving after that agreement, then you still got to go to court and get a court order. That mm. basically the reason we set the mediation business up is in line with the pre-action protocol, which we've been advising us. We knew it was happening. It's very it's very big in the social housing sector. So if you have a social yeah. tenant, I mean, you've got to think, uh, you know, there was one hundred and thirty thousand possession claims last year. Seventy percent of them was, were social tenants. The social tenants that go in arrears, they, there's pre-action protocol that's in place because it's about tenancy uh, sustainment. And they're now bringing it into private tenants as well. It is another barrier for landlords. Uh, and obviously we can talk about how the market's going to go. But, you know, I, and I, you know I, I wrote a blog which uh, I'm happy to share. There we go. I wrote it last week on our Landlord's Own website. You know, working these markets, being in the commercial market as well from being a bailiff and stuff, the biggest market that is going to get affected without a doubt is going to be the commercial property market, period. So, you know, uh, you know, with the with the residential, you'll see, uh, you know, my thought process is I think rents will come down a little bit. I think landlords will be more reasonable. Uh, I think I, I personally think the prices will. I mean, you know, you guys are investors, but I think the market will come down a little bit, maybe 10, 15 percent, possibly in the next year. Uh, but the saving grace is interest rates are rock bottom. Uh, I think you'll get a lot of landlords that want to do deals directly with the councils and three and five year leases where they want councils to be tenants rather than individual tenants because they're worried about vulnerability of tenants. You'll get the short stay Airbnb market. You know, that's been slaughtered. You know, 90 percent of that market is absolutely slaughtered at the moment until tourism kicks back up. You're seeing those landlords come back into the private rental sector market. You'll see uh, big initiatives by the government, I think, because they're going to really worry about homelessness because this pandemic. I think there'll be some major investment that happens there because, of course, the private rental sector and you guys have had housing benefit tenants. I know you have money in the past and whatever has been a sticking plaster. Uh, for the social sector as well. But commercial market, you know, you look at that, you know, I, I know from up me being a director of a business that's got 220 staff, we're based in Bournewood, we're all working remotely. When we come back, and t- we've already talked about how we're going to change our office space. We're going to do a lot more conferencing, which is what I do and stuff. We're going to have a lot more people working remotely. Um, you know, I, I, I saw an interview on Sky News last week, a guy that ran a uh, financial company in the city, and he said, my lease is coming up. I'm I'm giving the keys back. I'm going to work remotely. Mm. And then, of course, you've got retail, you've got hospitality. You know, they were struggling on uh, on the quarter before lockdown. Think about June. Uh, and I've had loads of commercial landlords and tenants contact me about, you know, about doing it. One thing we haven't touched on is also the student market in the resi market. Absolutely battered. You know, I've, I had one call from one uh, agent last week based in Oxfordshire. He said 30 students have contacted me from properties I manage, refused to pay the rent on the advice of their university. You know, because universities on the advice have of the there's university. now a movement of tenants Jeez. saying that they should have free rent. The tenants union and Acorn. Uh, there's a lot. You know, they were campaigning. If you go on Landlord Zone, we just broke a story. I think in eight cities this bank holiday Monday yesterday, there was uh, there was campaigns about wanting free rent from landlords. <laughs> Well, no, getting back to the commercial, that's, that, I mean, that's a ton of information there, Paul, and, and it sounds like you've got millions more in there. But just on the commercial stuff, let's talk commercial. So before all this happened, I decided to set up a serviced offices. Yeah. And just recently, the amount of inquiries, I think I said in the last podcast, I could have filled it 10 times. Yeah. Now, yeah, there's going to be a lot of properties, I mean, especially retail shops and that type of thing. I mean, they're opening up again on June the 15th, so maybe that will help them start getting back on their feet. But I'm sure, you know, wherever their feet are, they've got to find them first before they can get back on them. Mm. So what I'm looking for, the opportunity is, and it's not something you can just take on, like a rent-to-rent HMO or rent-to-rent yeah. service rent, accommodation. Rent-to-rent rent market is, is battered as well. Yeah, it has. And that's a, that's the, another market. The, the commercial the commercial world of setting up businesses and who you got to pay and you have to pay all of the, the, the you know the vendors fees and and um, legal fees and that type of stuff 
But I do see a massive opportunity in that space. And it just so happens, yeah. call it luck or whatever it is, that that's falling onto my feet. So I am currently now negotiating with those commercial landlords that you speak about who are on their backside, shall we say, because there are tenants that they've got who can't pay, won't pay, whatever they're doing, you know, they're, they're, they're trying to get these bounce back loans and whatever. And all of that, all that's doing is keeping their heads slightly just below water in these restaurants and, and retail sectors. So I'm going to these landlords saying, look, maybe we could do a deal. And they're saying, mate, I am open to any deal right now that you can think about because obviously the commercial world, and if you can elaborate on this, it's much easier to evict somebody who's not paying and you can get yeah. them out within 30 days. But yeah. if you can just, if you could just focus on that bit about how, how easy it is to evict and then the opportunity for us to jump, if you like, in yeah, the commercial yeah. world. Yeah, yeah, fine. So, yeah, so look, I was a, uh, a, a certified bailiff. You don't need a court order to gain possession. Bear in mind, there is a suspension on commercial properties up to the end of June. So a yes. bailiff can't go in and claim for rent. They can't forfeit on a lease. Not that landlords would want any forfeiting done because they're, they're, those properties are going to be idle. Uh, one thing that I, I've put in place and we're just we're just doing our page at Landlord Action is there's going to be a huge rise in squatting in commercial properties. Uh, I see that a lot of guardian companies will be needed because there will be empty properties. Uh, so one that so uh, there's an opportunity also, there. There's well, yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, obviously we work with a guardian company. Yeah, I mean, Manuel's good friends with the guardian company as well. Yes, yeah, so I know Arthur the, as well. Yeah, yeah, I do. Work the same one, the same one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, that, so that's basically, another opportunity. Yeah, it is another opportunity, but that but that industry needs to be regulated, and uh, there's some issues with regard yeah, to yeah. are they deemed as HMOs? They're they're going through a white paper at the moment on that, but you can't demand rent at the moment, believe it or not, by way of a winding up demand, mm. winding up petition, a bankruptcy petition, up to the end of June. Once we come out of that, how that's going to work, and is you've got the retail markets like you talked about, they're not going to get the footfall. You've got the change of how people were purchasing. So a lot of people, some people still didn't go online. They used to go to their high street. Then they were forced to go online because of the two month lockdown. So they've changed their buying habits. And obviously I've never seen so many Amazon uh, vans around at the moment, all over the place. Mate, They're not going to get the house. football. Come to my house. I know. Well, I get, <laughs> I get a package every day. And my, and my missus has all ordered the most obscure thing that you don't even know exists. You know, something that's come in for like 99 yeah. you think, What's the point? You know, Tana, I've Could never you ordered anything from Amazon. Actually, I've never actually got on it, but she Amazon. normally does it. Oh, I love Amazon. No, no, she's never done it. But, but I think oh, what's going to happen? Coming back to your point with regard to opportunity. So, without a doubt, I'll put my hat on it. The commercial property market. You know, historically, commercial landlords were very aggressive getting their quarters rent. So now, yeah. You know, I spoke to the commercial landlords this morning in my presentation I did. They're looking at monthly installments. There's talk about possibly going forward. How are they going to charge? Could they charge with regard to turnover? You know, there has to be some transparency. But I think what's going to happen mm. is with offices, what's going to happen is you have to, I mean, we have to have the two meter uh, distancing rule. We're only going to have a certain amount of staff going back to our large offices in, in Bourne Wood. But you've got massive city rents. You know, a lot of those staff are all working remotely from all over the place. And actually, do they yeah. need that space? Are people going to walk from leases? Are they going to be liable? Serviced offices, without a doubt. I mean, I was and uh, the same uh, serviced office that Manny was in and my, I was in. I was in there for 17 years. You know, <laughs> I could have yeah. bought the building. Yeah, but it was exactly. just very, I mean, I paid, there's no, I paid 2,200 quid a month, all inclusive. Mm -hmm. No rates. It was just very easy. We were back office doing evictions. We didn't need a front office and it all go. It was just, and we were there for 17 years. So serviced offices are going to be very attractive to bring your exes right down to help and cash flow. I think we work spaces, very, very important. And I know that build to rent operators who, you know, there's some big build to rent operators. I know Manny knows that that space as well. They are putting we work uh, spaces in living quarters in shared communals. They're going to really, uh, really, really fly as well. And I think that's that's going to change. And I think there is opportunity. But I worry about the pubs, the restaurants, the retail. They're not going to get the footfall. And obviously, Jimmy's in that game as well. And he know better than anyone. And, uh, you know, they're, they're really, really challenging. Yeah, I mean, the, the, yeah, Jimmy, the, you want to elaborate on that? 
Yeah, so so the pub side. I mean, I've, I've been at this site today, and I've only I was downstairs working uh, earlier on, only for a couple of hours. But the front door was open, so the gates were shut to the premises, but the front door was open. I probably would have said to ten people, "We're not open." So when the pubs do open, I can see that you know everybody's gonna. Uh, it's gonna be yeah. hard to to put in. A social distance, especially let's go to the Tottenham pub that I've got with you, Ash. Social distance is going to be quite hard to put in that place. And Paul, you know the pub because yeah, yeah. it's not worth opening for the people that's around there. We only open on event day, so yeah. unless that stadium's open, the pub's not open. So you know that, that that's an and actually when people issue. have a drink as well, how are they going to keep two meters? Exactly. It's, <laughs> I, I just think it's going to be well. Hard you know the uh, what they're what they're talking about is. You can go to the bar to get a drink, but you can't stand at the bar to drink it. Well, hang on a minute. When, when we're open on a game day, we must have 150 people standing at the bar three deep. It's, it's, yeah. I've so, been in a pub, oh, but it's We're packed, okay. Actually. We're okay. Packed. Yeah. <laughs> and, then, and then you've got to think to yourself, yeah, there's no games at the stadium, or if there is, they're going to be, you know, behind closed doors. But I can tell you this now, knowing Tottenham fans – if they will want to be near the stadium and get together, and they'll be filling the pubs if we yeah. can. But, I mean, mm, July yeah. July 4th, I think, is they're talking about pubs and hotels and that type of stuff. You know, we've got the hotel above. It's We don't know what's going to happen because I don't think that the government has any plan in place yet about pubs and that type of thing. But mm. one thing I was watching on the news maybe last week is they would some, – some pubs by the uh, coast had got around – some some loophole and they were doing takeaway beers and the lines were about 200 meters long so like jimmy says when the pubs do open we're going to need twice the security i think because they're going to drink they're going to be there longer and they're going to drink skinfuls i mean on our social yeah. media that's all they're talking about when we get open we're going to go mad and you know you yeah. can imagine being locked yeah. down for two months three months or whatever it, it turns out you can't go in a pub england is a very pub culture that's where people get together you know in australia yeah. it's it's coffees, let's go for a coffee, let's go for this, whatever, and sit down. Whereas in the UK, it's pubs, pubs, pubs. So people yeah. are just, are just yeah. gagging to get out. And we run, we, we run a load of service accommodations as well. And we're getting, you know, you talked about it's been hit 90%. It has been mugged, but we've been quite fortunate. We got ahead of the curve and we got in the, the key workers and uh, we got in people yeah. who were in a one-bed flat, but there was two of them and, their companies were paying for them to to take on a two bed flat. Um, yeah. Now we're getting quarantine people, so we've we've hit the marketing on that. So we're getting lots of overseas Brilliant. quarantine. So we're getting two week bookings for that. Um, fair enough, we're not making the money we were, but we are already now getting hammered in July, August, September. People now flying back in the bookings, assuming that they're going to be going on a holiday. And you know, it may be that they say, look, you can travel anywhere in the UK now. And staycations of what we've been hammering and it's huge the result is huge and we're getting you know it's getting back up to the higher prices again so we're starting to see a turnaround now within like yeah I, I, I think like my, my 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 parents they they live in portugal and that you know they've not seen me or, or, or the grandkids since december now they they booked their ferry because spanish now is start, starting to open their borders things are getting back to normal out in, in spain portugal so but when they do come over, they've got a quarantine for 14 days. Now, they've not got – they have got a house, but my brother lives there with his kids. So on, I'm just going on my parents' side of things. I'm lucky I've got a flat that they can go in and, they, you know, they can stay there for two weeks. So there's going to be a lot of that scenario where parents are, are abroad and, and, you know, people are stuck abroad. Uh, there's going to be coming over. that The service accommodation side and the hotel side will hopefully benefit on that. Um, but I, yeah, know. and I, I I think it's quite refreshing to see how you you dealt with that crisis and to get ahead of the curve. And obviously in Tottenham mm. they were doing obviously the testing and the quarantine. I think it's really yeah. important with the key workers and obviously the councils are crying out to be able well, to, to you, rehouse you, everyone. You say that. You well, say I'll tell that, you what, Paul, but mate, we've we've had enough. Yeah, Jimmy, go on. Yeah, I, I, I I've emailed all the councils in the borough that I'm in now, so Greenwich, Lewisham, Bromley. I've got one person in the hotel that I'm in now um, from Lewisham Council for three months. But the the one over in Tottenham, so Broadwalk, Southgate, I've, I've emailed them all and none of them have taken my offer up on it, which I find quite weird because... Yeah, but is, it, yeah, but is, it, is your rates within 
they're payable yeah, rates. Uh, uh, well, fit, fit, uh, I don't know, fit, uh, fifty pounds a night. That's you know, that's, right. Well, well I, I don't but, think. That's but have you engaged with the right people? Well, everybody on the housing sector, everybody that's that I've been told for the correct email, I've pinged them an email. Um, I've had which ones did you recommend, Paul? Well, I, listen, I know a lot of councils. I mean, I, I literally just came off the phone with Bristol Council, ironically, because I'm, I'm doing some work with them. I've got, uh, I've got contacts in quite a few councils. We can take it offline, but I know the guy head of lettings at Barnet. Uh, okay. You know, well, I'll, you know I'll, 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 give, I'll give you a call after this, Paul. Give me a call after, and I'll, at, I'll put you in touch with some. The, yeah, the key is it's about relationships with councils. You've exactly. got to get the right relationships with the right people. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, that's good. What about Haringey, Paul? Haringey is where our pub is. Uh, yeah, I do. I used to know. I used to do a lot of talks for Haringey. I can try and find out a contact for you. Pleasure. Yeah, brilliant. <laughs> Yeah. And how I, I know, know we, really well. I know we weren't doing a uh, a podcast on how to uh, network, but we might as well network while they're here. <laughs> yeah, cool. <laughs> Emmanuel, your experiences at the moment, I mean, you must have a load of tenants in 100 plus properties that, you know, you, you joint venture in and have yourself. Any issues that you've experienced with tenants that like can't pay, won't pay, if you pre-negotiated, sent out the letters like we did and et cetera? So there's a whole raft with the, with the tenants at the moment. It all stems from how the government have positioned it in terms of rental holiday. So lots of tenants think it's um, a holiday, they don't have to pay, and they don't realise the financial consequences. So some of them have taken the opportunity by the government making the announcement and also saying that you can't evict them for another, you know, for three months and so forth, to try and negotiate or reduce their rent or not pay it at all. So Yes, with having many properties, you're going to have a raft of them. In, in addition to that, we've got students in some of our properties where obviously they're, not, they, they're still in uh, the AST agreement where they're liable for the actual rents. They're still getting their grants and so forth. There's no reason why they shouldn't pay. So we've gone through a whole process of each and every tenant and explaining to them they have an obligation to prove to us they haven't been able to take a veil of any of the government incentives, one including furlough, additional work, all those different bits and pieces to show that they've got financial hardship. So that's what it's about. It's about helping people that are truly in financial hardship. Yeah, not, not everybody has lost their job. Not everybody mm. um, is not working. And there are a, a, lot, a lot of people that have been furloughed. The government put that specifically in place, including universal credit, to keep money in the system and not to create a cascading problem. So yes, we've tried to manage that all the way through. Uh, and as a landlord, as Paul said, we are looking at di different things now. So I, I wouldn't have wanted to consider council tenants before, uh, just because I know how the properties come back to us. I've done it in the past. Yeah. Uh, and each and every time the properties come back decimated. Um, so w whatever you say between the private sector and you know the social housing, there is a difference. People they, they treat the property and they act differently. So looking at that on that point on that point, money, I think you 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 have got a point. Statistically, a housing benefit tenant is supposed to stay in the property longer and look after it better. If you do direct deals with the council, let's say Barnet Council for argument's sake, you've got property in Barnet, they do three and five year deals. I mean, even in Edinburgh, I know this is quite random, Edinburgh now are buying properties now from landlords that were in the Airbnb and short stay markets. I mean, they've got something like 39 out of 100 properties were on the short stay Airbnb market. They're trying to get those properties in. If you get a direct deal with uh, the council, they are your tenant. They are liable for the state of that property. There's no voids and uh, the yeah. NHA rates have gone up. And I think a lot of landlords are considering that because they're worrying about how the market's going to go. So, 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 so this is what I'm now doing if I'm going to consider a council tenant. The first thing I will do is I'll, I need to see them physically like we are now. But secondly, I want to see the home that they're living in right now. Mm -hmm. I want to see how they live in. Because yeah. if they're living poorly and not looking after their property, guess what? Yeah, That's cool. going to happen to my property. So I've, yeah. I've got a two-step process now. One, I want to see them, speak to them. If I can't see them or speak to them, then I'm not interested. If I can't see them in their home, I'm not interested. I need to know how they're living. It's important. Yeah, yeah, you know, my, my properties are to a high standard, same as yours, Jimmy and Ashley. We put a lot, you know, we're, we're one of the landlords that look after our properties, make sure they're regularly maintained, 
and I don't want, you know, if I spent 40, 50,000 on refurbishment to have that destroyed. Um, so, agreed, agreed. And, and to be honest, I'm, not do, I'm doing that with all tenants, not just social housing. All tenants that are now coming into my property will be an interview and seeing them in their property. And the third thing I do, I physically call their previous landlord. I don't just take the referencing from the agency because they could always be misconstrued by the landlord or the reference agency. So I'm now taking that on board to make sure I'll put those over. How, how do you, how do you, how, if, if he gives you a telephone number, yeah. it's a previous landlord and it, his name is Jimmy London and he gives as you the you number. Know, not, yeah, and you think, that's the and thing, you think yeah. it's Jimmy London, but it really is his brother. How do you, how do you qualify that then, Manny? There's how do you know if you're speaking to the previous landlord? There's a few questions that I actually ask uh, that the landlord would act, that, that would know specifically. Um, and if you ask the questions of a if you ask a question of a landlord, they're going to have the answers automatically, right? I suppose yeah, the yeah, good thing you could say, like, you know, can you tell us what council tax band that you was on, how much your council tax was? I suppose silly little things like that that off the well, top also, of your head. Just, and, yeah, yeah, and just ask a question. What date I, mean, they I, moved I knew in, the answers, but I just wanted now? you to elaborate on it. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. You'll ask some specific things about the tenancy that a landlord would know. And he would Correct. say, oh, well, you know, I'm not sure. I'm not, you know, as soon as they do that, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah fair absolutely. absolutely. And what, what, Gentlemen. One, of the, one of the great things now because of COVID is that we're all doing these calls, either Zoom, WhatsApp, video, so you get to see the person. Well, yeah. Correct. And yeah. everyone's get, everyone is now, what should we call it, culturized, if that's such a word, to being online in Zoom meetings, whether it's work, or yeah. bloody quizzes every Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday night. You yeah. know, everyone's now accustomed to using Zoom. Everyone's like Paul said, everyone's getting online to, to order stuff. I mean, when I when I used to go shopping, it was like, okay, I'll, I'll go to the shop, see if I like it. Yeah, I like it, you know, put my hands on it and then order it off the internet and get the best deal. Now I just order it off the internet because I, now yeah. I'm more of accustomed to it because I know I can send it back for free. I wish another. I would have taken uh, Ash. I wish I would have taken Jimmy's advice because he bought five percent of Zoom shares before the uh, pandemic. <laughs> I I wish. Yeah, bloody hell, yeah. I know. Yeah, that yeah. would have been a good yeah. thing to invest in last year, wouldn't it, Zoom? Yeah. <laughs> the, truth, the truth is, as a landlord, we are being battered, and we've been mm. battered for the last five or six years from every single side. You know, we're the only business that can't claim our normal business expenses in the course of our business duty, like offsetting interest payments. And so we're being battered. There's, there's so many things that we have to do to be legal and compliant with gas safety certificates, electrical certificates, registering the deposit. So many different rules and regulations that we have to do. But and on the back of that, but on the back of that, Manny, right? You, you three guys are professional landlords. You've scaled up to a level. You know the game. You've got skin in the game. Well, I, you, that, and I said this in the pre. I say this, and I, I think I'm up to my thirty or thirty fifth podcast, webinar, whatever. If, I mean, I've done so many. Is the government aren't really interested in the small landlord? Ninety percent of landlords got one property. Okay. Yeah. The reality of what's happening with you know the pandemic. Don't forget, landlords. You know, most landlords have got full time jobs. So whether they've got businesses, they're self-employed, PAYO, they're going to be affected as well. You're mm. going to get the banning of Section 21. You're going to see all this legislation. You know, you've got the Section 24, the additional stamp duty. There's going to be no favours that are going to be pulled back from government with regards to taxation. That's a given. So what's going to happen yeah. is, um, you know, it's inevitable, even though the interest rates are on the floor, you will see the ones and two landlords cashing in their chips, thinking it's too much of a ball ache. And that will offer opportunity for other investors. I mean, I'm I'm Huge looking at buying a buy to let. Yeah, I'm 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 going to wait six months to a year before buying a buy to let locally in Barnet area. For my kids, yeah. you know, I'm going to wait. I can know, tell you now, the thing. biggest the biggest strategy for me, and what we're we're sort of teaching those that we mentor over the next two years, maybe longer, is definitely rent to buy. Whether we do the rent to buy, or we help other people to do the rent to buy, or otherwise known as a lease option taken over yeah. these properties, landlords getting that guaranteed rent, getting a getting like Emmanuel said, getting a tenant in who loves the property, looks after the property like it's it is their own because it will be their own. And it's already I'm getting phone calls and texts on a regular basis 
offering up properties and and I had to pinch myself thinking what the hell's going on I've got all these all these people out there that you know they, they go and do this two bob course and then there are two bob fucking deal source or whatever it is and they try to flog everyone shit deals well guess what the deal source is no longer needed in my opinion yeah. for me because for the professionals like us like you said you know, we're pinching ourselves with the opportunities that are coming in. It's, yeah, it's, look, it's look, coming look in. Look at that one ash in Sheffield that, um, that, that yeah, you know, fifteen that properties. Been 15 we've been properties. Off. Yeah. Wow. So. Just, just on that, on that point of courses, which you made, Ash, which is really important. I mean, I, like I said, I've been in this game a long, long time, and um, you know, I do lots of campaigns, have done for a number of years of landlords, but also in the property education courses. And you saw the likes of Inside Track and all these companies and these self-confessed uh, property gurus. And we all know yeah. who they are in the industry. Uh, uh, you know, uh, the Property Investors Bureau are trying to set up some sort of accreditation. I, I've agreed to be on the advisory council. Uh, and I have, I have spoke to trading standards uh, at a certain level because uh, Roper's coming in, which is uh, obviously the regulation of property agents. That's coming in, in the next two years. And on the periphery yeah. of that is rent to rent, guaranteed rent and property education. Because, of course, you know, you know what it's like. All these people, you know, yeah. uh, they're blinded, but they're blinded, obviously, to go on these courses and they pay all this money in the courses and whatever. Uh, there is going to be some regulation with regard to property investment. It's when they start selling the deals as well. Uh, that's when I've seen it all go sour mm. because I get asked to try and collect the money, help collect the money on a JV that's gone sour. Mm. Well, <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's one there's one at the moment who's making the press on Channel 4, on BBC, on yeah, the radio, Samuel on the Leeds. Yeah. yeah, you said Tremendous. it, not me. <laughs> and yeah. he's well, no, we, we, we did a story on Land Yeah, Yeah, yeah okay. we, we did a story on Land and Unfortunately, you know, there was a, a poor guy who was a soldier that ended up taking his life That's because right. he wanted his money back refunded. You know, we, we, we broke the story and, and that. And it's and it's it, it's terrible when I see it and I get contacted all the time. And it's just, you know, it's just part of um, something that I just uh, I think is shocking. Uh, you know, I, I, I've been I've been exhibiting at the Property Investors Show since it started, yeah. maybe 2001. And I saw Inside Out, yeah, Inside Track in 2002. And I see these companies and they liquidate and they remarket themselves and they, you know, yeah. you can be a millionaire, with, you know, with five, five guaranteed five deals with a certain amount of time. You don't know how the markets can go. I mean, Phil Martin was another one. You know, he ended up going inside. I mean, you know. Yeah, I mean, there's lots of these big companies. They spend you know, tens of thousands of pounds of marketing to get these. Well, they, you have. It's almost like they have to have the herd mentality. Get everyone in there. There's a whole process, the whole system to it. They get you in there. They get you feeling good. They play the loud music. Run to the back with your twenty grand, <laughs> and then you never see them again. You know, it's regulation. We've spoken about this many, many times. And regulation, you know, regulation. Hats off to you for driving the regulation because this is something that we want to see. Get rid of the cowboys. And then, uh, you know, at least you know that what you you're have getting to have is... enforcement, Ash. It's all about enforcement. That's what we lack in the industry. You can bring all no, the regulation absolutely. you want, with it, whatever so, you so, want, whether it's trading so, standards and counters. Let, 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 yeah. let, me put, let me put something into the mix, because I don't think you can regulate education. So each, each of us have all gone to school. We've all had teachers that have taught us the same yeah. subject. <laughs> not all of yeah. us, not all of us have taken that information and excelled. So how do you take education, which is the information, because some people will excel with that information, have a basic it is, and do something out of it. So, you know, I've been to different training courses, I've had good trainers and bad trainers. I've taken some action on some of them and I haven't on others. I can't put that, yeah. obviously, you know. But Manny, so but Manny, there's no redress. What I'm saying to you is, we, as a property redress scheme, as a government-backed yeah. scheme, we have said, and I push this forward, we have said to the Property Investors Bureau, you know, if you want to do it, you'll do it properly and we, we'll be associated. So if there's a complaint on a trainer from the customer, who was obviously the, 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 uh, obviously the student, yeah, we will yeah. offer redress to look in with regard to what was offered. And, and so that's the first start. Once you offer Brilliant. redress Brilliant. and then you can yeah. on the back of that, you can have some enforcement. At the moment, it's been for many, many, many years, the Wild West. So it's a start. Yeah. And yeah, then if you're a consumer yeah. and you're paying two grand for a course, well, then you want to see their reviews. You want to see that they've got their PI in place and they belong to a redress. At least there's a starting point. At the moment, there's nothing. And it all is down to clever marketing and clever marketeers. And the manual, you know what to look out for. You know what you're learning. 
what the issue is, is with all the newbies, all the brand new people Correct. coming in, eyes wide open, mouths wide open, and in most cases, ears shut from everyone saying, look, have a look first, talk to other people. So it's those new people coming in, and it's not the, the fact that, yeah. that mm. they're spending two or three grand, because if they're getting two or three grand's worth of value, that's great. But the ones where they're saying, come in, spend your 10, your 15 grand, oh, you're not broke, or you are broke, well, let's make it official, get yourself a credit card and bank it up to 15, 15 grand, yeah. and then you're left with a 15 grand debt, and you know, and then we end up paying for it through our taxes because the state has to take care of them. But that, that's anyway, we could go on all day about this. That's where I think checks need to be, that people yeah. should be able to put stuff on their credit card that they can't afford. I think that's where yeah. the check needs to be. Affordability, yeah. definitely. Yeah. Uh, like, definitely uh, affordability checks so people don't get into debt to further their education although they might do that when they go to university this is slightly different I think that they don't actually create new debt Paul, you, there's a company called Checker Trader out there why don't you do yeah. Paul's a Trader <laughs> there you go yeah. I'll take 10% <laughs> well, I think that's why yeah. that, what's, that's what the Preparty Investors Bureau have done to try and set up and we have yeah. an advisory council like Richard Bowles is on there. I'm on there. David Sand. A few people that have been in the industry a long time. And we've got. I've got no. There's not. You know. There, there, there's, there's, I'm not into uh, selling property education courses like they do. That you know. So I think it's accreditation. Uh, there's got to be redress. There's got to be some sort of accountability and enforcement. Otherwise, it just ca carries on as it is. Really, it is it's exactly what you said, Ash. It's the newbies. You know. Yeah. Because everyone's made mistakes. Everyone's thrown money at stuff. You know, and as a landlord, you always make mistakes. It's about how you learn with them. Yeah. yeah. And on that, boys, I'm conscious yeah. of time. I know people yeah. are not going for their uh, their daily trips to Durham at the moment, although if you're listening, <laughs> Mr. Cummings, and you're out there, enjoy the podcast, my old mate. <laughs> All right, take care, guys. So, Thanks, Paul. Jimmy, yeah, thank you, pleasure, Paul. Guys. It's been a pleasure, mate. It's been great to meet you, albeit online. And um, we hope to catch up. And maybe I hope, do another I hope one to see you at the Bill Nick soon. one day. You'll see me at the Bill Nick. Don't you worry about that. And I'll buy you a drink <laughs> or three. And uh, just just let us know what the show is again and when it's on and when Jimmy's going to be starring. Right. So the, the, the TV show is called Nightmare Tenant Slum Landlords. It's on Channel 5. It's on every day. I don't know when this podcast comes out. Normally it's been at 11.15 every day repeats. It's on Five Star. The yeah. new series, hopefully... Mo June, July, uh, and uh, you won't miss okay. Jimmy with, with his glistening white teeth walking down uh, South East London. I'm looking at well. I'm just glad. I'm just glad that the, halfway through this podcast, Emmanuel put his shirt on, so I can <laughs> breathe again. But that's good. All right, boys. Listen, it's been Take a pleasure. Care. Thanks again. Yeah. See you soon. See, See you later. later. Thank you. Take yeah. care now. Bye-bye. Yeah. Cheers, Bye.